The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. God of righteousness, you are ever faithful to your promises to your people. Strengthen our hearts and transform our lives so that we might always be prepared for the coming of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Good morning. <clears throat> the first reading is from the book of Jeremiah, the 33rd chapter, beginning at the 14th verse. Behold, the days are coming, declares the Lord, when I will fulfill the promise I made to the house of Israel and the house of Judah. In those days and at that time, I will call a, cause a righteous branch to spring up for David, and he shall execute justice and righteousness in the land. In those days, Judah will be saved, and Jerusalem will dwell securely. And this is the name by which he will be called. The Lord is our righteousness. Please join me in responsively reading Psalm 25. To you, O Lord, I lift up my soul. O oh my God, in you I trust. Let me not be put to shame. Let not my enemies exalt over me. Indeed, none who wait for you shall be put to shame. They shall be ashamed who are wantonly treacherous. Make me to know your ways, O Lord. Teach me your paths. Lead me in your truth and teach me, for you are the God of my salvation. For you I wait all the day long. Remember your mercy, O Lord, and your steadfast love, for they have been from of old. Remember not the sins of my youth or my transgressions, according to your steadfast love, remember me, for the sake of your goodness, O Lord. Good and upright is the Lord, therefore he instructs sinners in the way. He leads the humble in what is right, and teaches the humble his way. All the paths of the Lord are steadfast love and faithfulness for those who keep his covenant and his testimonies. For your name's sake, O Lord, pardon my guilt, for it is great. The second reading is from 1 Thessalonians, the third chapter. What thanksgiving can we return to God for you, for all the joy that we feel for your sake before our God? as we pray most earnestly night and day that we may see you face to face and supply what is lacking in your faith. Now may our God and Father himself and our Lord Jesus direct our way to you, and may the Lord make you increase and abound in love for one another and for all as we do for you so that he may establish your hearts blameless in holiness before our God and Father at the coming of our Lord Jesus with all his saints. Gospel according to St. Luke, the 21st chapter. 
Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said, There will be signs in sun and moon and stars, and on the earth distress of nations in perplexity, because of the roaring of the sea and the waves, people fainting with fear and with foreboding of what is coming on the world. For the powers of the heavens will be shaken, and they will see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and great glory. Now when these things begin to take place, straighten up and raise your heads, because your redemption is drawing near. And he told them a parable. Look at the fig tree and all the trees. As soon as they come out in leaf, you see for yourselves and know that the summer is already near. So also, when you see these things taking place, you know that the kingdom of God is near. Truly, I say to you, this generation will not pass away until all has taken place. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will not pass away. But watch yourselves, lest your hearts be weighed down with dissipation and drunkenness and cares of this life, that the day come upon you suddenly like a trap, for it will come upon all who dwell on the face of the whole earth. But stay awake at all times, praying that you may have the strength to escape all these things that are going to take place and to stand before the Son of Man. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. I invite the young and young at heart, in person and online, uh, to attend to our children's message today. Oh, Luther Bear and his family are getting ready to send their annual Christmas letter to their friends and relatives. Do you know who else wrote a lot of letters, Luther Bear? Paul, who wrote the letter today, uh, part of one that we read from the uh, first letter to a church in a place called Thessalonica. Yeah, I know that's a big name for a city. Oh, so when you write the letter, you share with people things that your family has done over the years, over the year, but you also wish them a happy new year. Well, maybe there's some other things you can put in that letter, like Paul does, giving thanks for the loving people to whom you're writing and encouraging them, saying that you're praying for them, especially in a new year, and that they may be blessed and reminded about how much God loves them in Jesus, especially at Christmas. That's a good time to remind them about that. And so even though Paul wrote all these letters many, 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 many years ago, he gives us a good example to write letters that are loving and encouraging and a blessing in the faith to friends and family and church family in Jesus everywhere. Amen.
Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. But watch yourselves, lest your hearts be weighed down with dissipation. So, true confessions. Uh, many of you here know that a few years ago, I studied and completed my uh, doctor of ministry. And what that showed me was not how much I have learned, but how much I always need to keep learning. So for example, when I am reading scripture, and sometimes different translations are going to have different words, um, and actually my husband, who sometimes I consider more knowledgeable in these matters than myself, as we're taking a look at this passage, I'm like, Todd, but what really do they mean by dissipation uh, in, in this context in scripture? Um, so we uh, did a very scholarly thing. We went to Google. <laughs> so I, I just want to lift that up so that if you're, you know, reading your scriptures and you're like, boy, this must be so much easier for Pastor Karen. She knows everything. No, she doesn't. And she also goes to the Google. Um, and uh, so there are wonderful and, and ecumenical. Uh, that was a United Methodist site that we were looking at, I believe, uh, regarding this. And they had... Uh, a beautiful uh, translation of uh, what dissipation is in this context. So do not let your hearts be weighed down with dissipation. Do not let your heart be uncentered from God. Dissipation as the uncentering of the soul from God. So let that sink in a moment. And what might lead to this break and turning away from God? Uh, I'll, I'll return to the drunkenness later. I think I'll go, go first to the cares of this life. In thinking about this Sunday, and this is the first Sunday in Advent, but it's also a time when Christmas preparation panic is how people view this time of year. And all the cares and worries that that may involve, which may lead to trying to medicate things like that with other things in larger terms of drunkenness, but that we get so caught up in things that are not of God that our soul actually in a time when we're called to increase preparation and return to the Lord our God, we end up becoming more uncentered and distraught and distracted than even usual in our lives. And Jesus is saying that it is important because of his return or for us when we will come to rest in his arms at our death, that we are constantly in a mode of preparation of attending to our Lord so that we may hear what he has to say for guiding our steps through all the ups and downs and twists and turns of this life. So how do we do this? How do we keep our souls centered? We hear a call to stay awake and to pray, to prepare in prayer. And it's something we should be doing always, but as we start a new church year, how many of us make resolutions and try to start anew on January 1? For us in our lives of faith, every day actually, throughout the year, 
is a chance to be renewed and be in the presence of our God in worship with sisters and brothers and those coming to know about God in private in our prayer and reading of God's holy word and going out showing our love of God what we have first received from him his love for us sharing that in service to our neighbors and if we're not listening and if we're not prepared we may not be ready for those times when we can share God's love and be of assistance to those in need. Um, I almost was going to title uh, this uh, sermon, Dietrich and Denzel. Um, and so as many of you know, uh, we've been uh, studying the writings and life of Dietrich Bonhoeffer this month. Uh, there is currently a major film uh, in the theaters about Bonhoeffer's life and witness, uh, and uh, that he uh, put it all on the line for the Lord and for others, and left behind a tremendous witness of his writings, especially while he was imprisoned uh, in Nazi Germany. And, but more than that, uh, for me, looking at his classic work, Life Together, based on an underground seminary for the Confessing Church, Bonhoeffer was so clear about our need to be praising God and in scripture and around the Lord's table together and equally to be taking time every day alone before God meditating maybe even on just one word of scripture that's speaking to our heart and going to guide us through the next hours. And Bonhoeffer, uh, it wasn't all study and intensity at this underground seminary in, at Finkenwalde. He also believed in uh, the exercising of the body and of having fellowship together so that holistically we are ready to serve God however we are going to be called upon to do so. So Denzel, you uh, may uh, have figured out or not that I actually mean Denzel Washington. Uh, and I never thought in my life I would be quoting an interview from Esquire magazine in a sermon, um, but I am. And as soon as I can purchase it in hard copy, uh, the December, um, the winter issue, December, January, uh, I intend to do so. He, here, here's a modern day 70 year old, very successful actor who writes about being raised in the church and what it meant to him, who also talks about, and Bonhoeffer was like this too, raised in the church, but also seeking a very real personal spiritual relationship with his savior. And Denzel writes in this five part interview or speaks that, as it is recorded about truly coming to faith in the spirit uh, at a revival meeting that he attended and given it all to God. And if it were just that, it'd be one thing, but it's not. Because he goes further to write about being up every morning and taking a significant time in prayer before God and seeking God's guidance and wisdom for his life. And in one of those regular sessions, being blessed with a particularly glorious vision which happens, it doesn't always happen for all of us, but there's a better chance if you're every day in prayer with God that that type of blessing comes through the spirit. And even though you might say, hey, what about that movie Training Day? He played a pretty bad guy. He writes that as he took that role, on the cover of the script, he wrote from scripture, the wages of sin is death. As a reminder for what happens when we go astray, 
when our souls become uncentered from God. Beyond the being raised in the church, the being into a, coming into a very spiritual relationship and daily prayer, he writes that especially while he was away from home, the mother of his children would gather them in the morning to read scripture that they would talk about and take with them through the day. And how grateful he is for how grounded the children are. And not only that, talks about a brother in Christ <laughs> encouraging him to work with a trainer later in life. Again, taking care of body and soul to be able to be at God's service. I lift this up today because sometimes when I talk about my own prayer disciplines and also confess that I now work with a trainer, um, that, well, that's you, Pastor. You know, you're a professional Christian or something like that. This is a man who has a very successful career that is not in the church. And Christ, our Lord Jesus, is a central part of his life and the centering of his soul as he goes about his life. And which, by the way, includes recovery from drinking. And so he also has left the drunkenness behind. As we go forth, I also want to lift up something a little bit closer to home briefly. Staying awake to serve our neighbors in God's name truly happened last Sunday uh, when we checked on our sister in Christ, Raydell, who was urgently in need of assistance. And that was a matter of sisters and brothers of her here staying awake to serve and bring comfort to her at a very, very critical time. And so whether you're a person who's a great theologian and young martyr to the faith years ago, a successful actor in the 70s, a beloved minister of music here and those of us in this congregation, we are all called to be prepared. We are called to look to the centering of our souls in a loving God who will guide us each and every day in this season of Advent, in Christmas, and every day of the church year. And may the peace of God that surpasses all understanding keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen.